Hello and welcome to this short video, this short presentation about using video for your brand. Now, why would you even be using video for your brand? Well, a critical element of you growing your business is to be able to connect with people. And right now, the best way to connect with people is to show up online as you, to help people understand where is the face behind the business. During the pandemic, you know, since the beginning of 2020, we really want to see who we're buying from. There's a big push to be able to support local businesses but if they can't find you if your customers and clients can't find you online they're going to have a very hard time paying you why am I telling you all this and who am I well my name is Gwyneth and in 2011 I lost my job I was made redundant and it took me a couple of years to start to get used to showing up as me, finding out what it really was that I wanted to do. But in 2013, when I set up my business, Feel Good Coaching and Consulting, one of the things I started doing was to coach people using video for interviews, for presentations, just to help them get comfortable with the technology, with the software, setting up some very basic things and in between times I have coached thousands of people helping them to feel comfortable using video to feel confident and showing up as themselves not trying to put on some fabulous fancy uh, presentation or whatever you know there's a big rule when it comes to using video and that is to keep it simple especially if you're wanting to connect with people so let us start setting up your video marketing with some very practical steps. First of all, your equipment. There is no need to go and spend a huge amount of money on equipment. Use your mobile phone, use your laptop. Having said that, do check the camera quality and I'm going to explain why in a minute when it comes to talking about software. Not every laptop has a fantastic camera. Most phones these days do. And up until recently when I broke my phone, <laughs> um, I actually used my phone for absolutely every single video I ever did. did. Now I'm using my laptop a lot more. And you will find that your uh, laptop, regardless of which system you're using, really does have uh, more than sufficient for you to be doing. Uh, a selfie stick with a tripod will help you to stabilize your video. Um, I'm going to just show you mine here, if I can show it on the camera. There we are, we've got a little uh, tripod with a selfie stick and something that is going to um, hold your phone if you're using phone. Uh, you might also consider wanting to get a plug-in microphone. Uh, specifically, if you are selling products, and you are recording with your phone or your laptop or your camera focused on the products, but you are talking about what it is that you're selling. Maybe you don't have it in your hand. Maybe you're standing a little bit away. A microphone can be very, very useful to uh, plug into your laptop or plug into your phone, have it on your shirt so that you are recording, so that you're giving a narrative as you go through. But absolutely, again, not essential. Um, if you are doing training videos, how to videos, I would suggest that you consider having a plain background. So if I'm doing a blog or if I'm doing some kind of uh, engagement video, then it's not so important. But if I'm doing something to do with training, I usually have a plain background because I want the person who's watching to focus on what it is that I am teaching. Now, there is something called a cowboy studio that you can um, get that includes a, a couple of lights. I've got a couple of lights here and there is a, um, a frame that you can also put backgrounds onto. Now, depending on which software you're using, you might decide you want to use a virtual background. If in the beginning, though, you're not sure about what to do, I would at least get a stand. You know, you don't have to get the, all the lighting and all the rest of it. A, a small uh, lamp that has uh, that you can move around can do just as well or sitting in front of a window so you've got natural light. Check all those things. But if you are just starting out, I would not recommend that you start spending huge amounts of money on equipment, particularly when it comes to your backdrop. Now, further down the line, you may decide you want to get 
um, a, a specific backdrop made for you with your logo, with your name. And there are some fabulous people out there, but it does require an investment. And in my experience, the kind of PVC backdrops that you can buy online, a lot of them, particularly the cheaper ones, the quality is not great. You're going to have creases in them. It can be very difficult. So if you do decide you want to buy a frame, I would suggest that to start with, you get yourself a couple of meters of very plain fabric. That is all this is. It's a piece of black fabric that hangs nicely that I've stuck up the top. You can't see it now, but it is more than adequate. Like I said, when you're starting out, there is no need to be spending huge amounts of money. If you get further down the line and you want to get a bit creative with uh, different backgrounds, then absolutely fine. And if you are going to invest in something that is uh, has got your logo, has got your background, then make sure that you find somebody, um, you know, get recommendations from people. I don't want to recommend anybody specific here. It's a very personal thing having your own background. So those are some basic points about um, your equipment. And like I said, if you can get this set up in advance, if you can decide all this stuff in advance, it will take a lot of the nervousness away for when you actually come to start talking on video. OK, software. This will depend a lot on whether you are planning to go live or whether you are going to record training videos. You do have direct live op options on Facebook and on YouTube. YouTube doesn't let you um, always record uh, live on your phone. It depends on how many followers you have. It depends on uh, how much engagement you have. YouTube does, however, allow you to set up uh, a range of events in advance so that you can go live on YouTube using your laptop. On LinkedIn, uh, you have to actually apply to LinkedIn. You have to have quite a track record for them to, uh, you know, give you that option. It depends on whether it's going to be worth it, but you, you're going to have to show up regularly, consistently providing valuable content, having engagement for LinkedIn to be able to, uh, to, to decide to actually give you the option for you to be able to stream live to that platform. Now, if you are wanting to share your screen, as I'm doing here, there are many, many different options. If you've got a presentation, I love Windows. I'm not an Apple fan. I'm using PowerPoint. PowerPoint is absolutely fantastic if you want to just have um, a little icon, uh, a little, you know, you down in the bottom of the screen and sharing your screen with a presentation. PowerPoint does it all for you. Apple also has a screen share option. You know, you don't actually have to pay anybody anything to be sharing your screen and recording. If you are sharing your screen from um, potentially if you're doing a live in your Facebook group or on your Facebook page or somewhere, there's StreamYard that you can use, Loom you can use. Like I said, those are usually for Internet tabs, uh, your other social media platforms. Zoom is very good for sharing your screen. You can also live stream to Facebook or YouTube from Zoom if you want to screen share. The only thing I will say about Zoom is something I've noticed is that uh, I always end up looking green on Zoom. So do check uh, the camera settings. Um, when you're coming to, to, to sharing information, do some trial runs in advance. I know that Zoom is very, very popular, especially if you've got lots of people coming on. If you're if you're doing um, a, a screen share for a lot of people live, it's very useful. But do check, like I said, on the camera. I ended up buying myself a second second camera um, to stick onto um, my uh, laptop uh, because the Zoom software, there is something weird in there. I don't know what it is. Uh, and you'll, you may find that you look completely different. So check out the, the screen share options there. Creating marketing videos without you in them. There are hundreds of types of software. We're not talking specifically about live streaming now or putting you on video. Um, Animoto is a great way to start. But like I said, there are hundreds of options. So go and look, you know, if, if you um, are, are doing, if you're looking at marketing, advertising, 
Again, that's not going to be something you're doing as you're starting out necessarily, but there are some fantastic software options out there that let you put together advertising videos very, very easily. Don't go spending thousands uh, to uh, pay somebody to do something professional when you're just starting out. Now, when it comes to hosting your videos, clearly if you're doing a live or even if you're doing this kind of training video, you need to have them somewhere. You need to be able to upload them somewhere so that people can easily access them. Now, I'm still using YouTube. I've never ever had a problem with YouTube. You can upload your video onto YouTube and you can make it unlisted so that only people with the link can actually view it. And if somebody clicks on share on an unlisted video, YouTube will pop up a message and say, please remember, basically, this is an unlisted video. And before you share it, respect people's privacy. Now, if you're more concerned about security, if you consider your content to be too valuable for you to, to run that risk, then uh, think about using Vimeo. The difference is that YouTube is free and Vimeo is not that you've got a very limited amount of space for videos that you can use on, on Vimeo. So check those things out as well. And the final piece of software that you might be thinking about is to provide uh, captions. Uh, in between times, Facebook and YouTube, their artificial intelligence that they use for captions is very much better than it used to be. But if you want a really professional uh, caption addition to your videos, then go to rev.com. You have several options there. You can choose between a real human being transcribing what it is you're saying, or you can just send uh, rev.com the URL to your video on YouTube or, or wherever you've decided to host it, um, host it or on Facebook, and you can ask for an automated transcript. In my experience, the automated transcript is fantastic. Rev says um, that they give an accuracy of around 75-80%. I have actually found that Rev on an automatic tra transcript higher than 90%. I guess it depends a lot on your accent. But again, it, we're talking pennies and captions can be very, very useful, uh, especially if somebody's scrolling through on their social media and they can actually read what you're saying instead of having to turn the volume on. The exception is maybe YouTube. I'm going to assume that if somebody goes to YouTube, they do actually want to listen uh, to what you're saying. But again, if they're just scrolling through, having captions there can be very useful to keep people's attention. OK, what about you? Now, again, like I said, there is enough. Uh, I never forget the first time I went live, I had a pink check shirt on with a pink sparkly background. Goodness gracious me. But it's all imp important learning points. One thing I would say is to, you know, check what you look like on camera. Keep clear of clothing with stripes, checks or busy patterns because there is a tendency for, for you know instead of somebody looking at your face there's this glare coming out from whatever it is that you're wearing check what you look like on camera shirt collars if you've got a shirt collar if you're wearing um, a jacket uh, as well it can look messy if you've got a jacket over a shirt then i would advise you to keep it simple keep something very flat you know very simple t-shirt or something on underneath that sits flat so you haven't got lots of stuff going on around your neck the same thing goes for jewelry if you're somebody who, who likes wearing big necklaces or even you know scarves and those types of things in a photograph, they can look beautiful, but if somebody's got this thing going on and you're moving as well, it can irritate the eye of the person watching you and you really want them to be focused on what you're telling them. So try it out. Do some um, test runs with your video, with your recording and work out what works best. For conversational videos, now this is a training video clearly, but for conversational videos, do make sure that you've got at least your head and your shoulders. Now, if you look down now at the little uh, icon down at the bottom where I am, if I was to get very close to you here, um, it can get a bit weird. So sit back um, the kind of distance that you would normally be sitting 
to somebody if you were having a conversation with them you know there is this thing about personal space and even if you're not face to face with a person invading their personal space on video can like i said feel a little little bit strange so check that out as well where do you feel comfortable it doesn't matter if you're training it doesn't matter if you're doing this type of video head and shoulders is a good uh, way for you to uh, come across as being professional without invading somebody's personal space look at the camera now this is a big thing as well especially if you're doing a presentation if you're doing some type of training there is a tendency to look at the screen now if i look at the screen even you know if you're on zoom if you have a, if you've got a client call on zoom or whatever and you're looking at them on screen if i look at myself now it looks to you as though I am looking down. Now, every time I look down, I'm losing the connection with the person I'm talking to. So there is a lot to be said here for you to be practicing looking at the camera. And one thing that I have done with all of my clients is to suggest to them that they cut themselves out a little circle like this with another circle in the middle that they can then put over I just do that you can't see me doing it put over the camera the camera is usually very small it's on a dark background it can be a big challenge to look at the camera especially if you have got somebody else on screen by providing something up oh, there we go like this I've written on here I feel fabulous I feel good and if you just put that over your camera you'll also find that it helps you to smile a little bit more and like I said by looking at the camera all the time you will find that the connection to the person you are speaking to is a lot better now there are some people that say you should be um, looking around uh, be, be looking at different people but it doesn't work like that when we speak naturally as I'm doing now we look up a lot of us do look up you might look up check this out test yourself record yourself and then play it back to yourself and see what you're doing I tend to look up if I'm thinking about something if I'm looking for the right words what should I say now if I'm looking up you can still see my eyes but like I said, as soon as I look down, if I'm looking down at my notes, if I'm looking at the screen, if I'm looking at somebody else on the screen, we've lost the connection. It's practice. That's all it is. It's absolute practice. And remember that regardless of how many people you are talking to, they will still be looking in your eyes if you look to the camera. So very, very important point. Plan what you're going to say. Another way to, to get comfortable with what it is you're going to say is to have bullet points. Don't try and remember everything on a script because if you try to remember word for word everything that you're going to say and then ah you forget something, the whole thing goes to pieces. Another thing I found really useful when I've been working with clients, particularly because uh, it is quite natural for us to sometimes look up, is to have your laptop or how to have your phone with a board or your wall behind what's going on and then you can just put bullet points you can write bullet points on the or post-it notes wherever on your board behind you and you can just look up and just be reminded but get used to telling stories around your bullet points as opposed to remembering word for word an entire script you will wear yourself out trying to remember what it is you're trying to say okay what else just a few more points hold your phone in the landscape horizontal position now I haven't got my phone here but you know what I mean hold it lengthways uh, because what you'll find is if you've got it um, upright when it comes to playback you'll end up with two very large black uh, stripes uh, either side of the phone and that's not great you you want to get the attention of the people you're talking to you want to be using as much as the screen as possible Facebook likes square videos as well now that's a conversation from another day if we uh, see each other afterwards but think about um, you know holding your phone horizontally and that's another reason why a selfie stick um, is, is absolutely great because uh, the the holder actually only allows you to put your phone in that way so hold it landscape horizontal position 
Another great tip that I learned many years ago is whenever you are starting a, uh, a video, always smile for a couple of seconds at the beginning and at the end. And the reason for that is if you decide to edit your video, if you've done a live, if you download it, if you want to upload it somewhere else, maybe onto your website, if you've got that smile at the beginning and the end, it makes it much, much easier to edit just a second or two, especially when loads of people like I see they finish their video and you will see them moving towards the camera with their finger to press on end live stream or end recording or whatever you might want to get yourself a pen of some description uh, with a you know a, a screen pen so that actually work out you know see exactly where the uh, recording button is on your screen so that you are still smiling when somebody finishes and you just press the end live stream or end video or whatever and that you're not doing this how many videos have you seen of somebody doing that anyway so a uh, little tip there Think also about potentially adding some music in. There is a lot of music available online. Uh, you have to be careful of copyright, um, clearly. But there are um, there is one company called Audio Blocks where you can sign up for a year. Uh, last time I signed up, it was ninety nine dollars a year, and they have some fabulous music that you can use add into your videos. Music will always elicit emotions, and if you're using video to sell in particular, uh, a little bit of music in the background can really help people connect with you even more strongly than just listening to you and seeing your fabulous smiley face. Social videos, videos for engagement are usually shorter and best done live, particularly on Facebook. Facebook, you know, I could talk for days about Facebook, but if you're looking for engagement, um, social videos are usually shorter. You're not going to go live on Facebook just for a social purpose, just for engagement purposes for 30 minutes don't do it. I usually recommend that if you if you're just providing a little bit of content, uh, you know, one um, useful piece of information, then I usually suggest between three and six minutes, maybe 10 minutes if you want to go into a bit more detail. If, if it's anything beyond that, then clearly it, you know, it's a training and uh, that might be something you're doing on your business page. That might be doing something you are doing in a Facebook group when it actually comes to selling. Uh, and finally, always, always include a call to action. Tell your potential clients and customers what do you want them to do next? Do you want them to go to your website? Do you want them to go and join a group? Do you want them to watch another video? Do you want them to sign up to your newsletter? Do you want them to buy something from you? Don't waste the valuable um, opportunity you have. If somebody's watched your video, then you want them to do something. You don't just want them to disappear off into the sunset. If they've been interested enough to watch your video to the end, ask them to do something. On YouTube, you can add end screens. It can say, you know, subscribe to your YouTube channel or you can uh, get them to watch the next video or ask them to uh, look for a link below in the comments to do whatever it is that you want them to do next. So always, always include a call to action at the end. Uh, if you don't, it's a huge wasted opportunity. So those are a few basics about uh, you know how you can use video for your brand. It is a huge, huge subject. Now, I clearly, I don't know where you are watching this video. Uh, it is part of my coaching program for my clients so that we can work more closely together. I also post it now and again um, if I'm doing a challenge in one of my groups, whatever it is. If we haven't yet connected, please do come along, say hello, either by signing up to my uh, newsletter or even better, come and join my Facebook group online branding strategies. Until then, I wish you the very, very best of luck. Stay safe, stay healthy. Most importantly, stay fabulous. Loads of love and bye for now.